Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Mehul and in this video I want to explore a little bit with you guys how and what does it take for a code damn playground runner to run, for a replit to run, as a matter of fact for a stack blitz to run, things like these for code sandbox to run. Now obviously a bunch of these websites have a different architecture. For example, stack blitz completely runs inside your browser, which kind of is difficult to you know execute if you are working with different languages like rust or golang or whatever but the way codedam works is fairly you know relatable to how you would see replit working but there are obvious architectural differences but in this video i want to briefly go over through how does codedam playgrounds actually work what does it take to make it work because fundamentally those are those things those few things are same if you are running it whether on Replit, whether it's on Code Sandbox, whether it's on CodeDam, any other website. So, first things first, what is exactly happening here? You can see you have a live terminal with you, which is a bash terminal. So what is this sorcery, right? Is this a actual server? Is this a, you know, a mockup? Well, in most cases, if you remove sites like Stack Blitz, you would see that if you want to execute Node.js or any other backend related language, you have to have a computer because your browser does not understand what a node binary is, right? Or even if it does, it does not have access to the OS level APIs like file system or networks or, you know, just the regular shell. So what you have to do is you eventually have to give a computer to the person who is browsing this website. And computers are hard to maintain dynamically i mean they are easy to maintain if you're using your own things if you're using them for own things like containers and stuff but if you are giving them to users who might do anything you have to make sure the containers are sandboxed the physical hosts are protected and you know a bunch of other website other things are on, on your website so if you take a look at code dam first of all how it works is you can see that this web page has got a unique URL and this is our architecture at the moment. Replit uses a different architecture where they have coded their own DNS which resolves this host name. But for us, this does the job because we are not trying to become Replit, at least not right now. So watch it out Replit. But what we try to do is we map the IP address behind the domain name to the actual physical host on which your container is running, right? So now you have access to this container, this Linux machine. This has got an IP address of this, whatever this is in the URL, and this is mapped directly behind that, right? So once we have got access from internet to your container, things become super easy. Why? Because now you just have to manage this container. You have given physical access from outside world inside the container and the way we do that is by just you know including the physical host ip address within the url and mapping it over to a port number which corresponds to a port number inside this container right so this container is actually a docker container which binds a port in this case it's what 6009 so this port is binded to 1337 in this container right so what you'll see is that if i go ahead and run this static server on public port if you try to echo this public port public port you're gonna see that it's 1337 so whatever you run inside this container inside port 1337 <clears throat> will be available on this domain at port 6009 right and this is like the magic of reverse proxying and nginx that is a different thing but fundamentally even if you have a split terminal that is also connected to the same machine these two terminals share the same machine but fundamentally what's happening is that what you're trying to do is you're trying to first of all connect the outside world the internet to a physical host to a physical computer and once you do that you want to map a port at least one port from inside to the outside world that's how you can access services replet like for example does this on port 3000 i think so whatever i don't know which port they run uh, I don't know if they even run a node process here but whatever port they run let's see I think it's 3000 
yeah, I mean they are running a very minimal Linux uh, thing, so they don't even have LSOF and things like these. But what you'll see is that Replit is also probably mapping this port 80 on this subdomain to some IP address which is running something on port 3000, right? And maybe like, you know, even not even 3000 on a different port which corresponds to port 3000. So we need this redirection in order to reach, in order to make sure your internet application reaches the backend. Now, once you have done that, the next part is dynamically allocating containers. Now, I think I have read one of the guides where Replit has mentioned they use something like Kubernetes. At Codedam, we do not use Kubernetes or any other um, automatic scal scaling solution because our needs are a little bit different. So what we do is we have a container pool where, you know, a physical host, for example, one physical host can host two containers. Then we will have a bunch of physical host, which can have, you know, if you have n physical host, you have two n containers available to you. So we try it whenever you refresh this page, whenever you come back to a page or a challenge or whatever, we try to allocate, we try to pull a container out of the physical host. If we find a container, that's fine. If we don't find it, we scale up the operations of physical host. So physical host gets created, new physical host get created. And at the moment we are using digital ocean for storing these physical hosts. So what you would be able to see is I need a two factor authentication, but what you will be able to see is that we have all these physical hosts, all these IP addresses as the physical host created inside DigitalOcean, which hosts these containers. And these are ephemeral, right? So they are destroyed, they are created again, they are destroyed so that, first of all, it provides us a clean environment um, because this is rotating. And second of all, it just, you know, makes sure that no attack is, if somebody tries to attack or do whatever bad things, those things are not propagated for a very long time to everyone else sharing the same machine. So in a nutshell, this is how it works. There are a lot of mini details as well, how the initial handshake happens, how the container is actually allocated, how this thing actually scales and works. I mean, for scaling, but like I mentioned, we just create more hosts and scale it down. But um, yeah, there are a lot of bunch of services we use. I mean, for this whole playground, you know, that the services which are invoked, I think I'll go in order, are Vercel, number one, then GraphQL, hosted on AWS Lambda, number three, then WebSockets, hosted on API Gateway, number four, then WebSockets invoke more AWS Lambdas for responding, number five, AWS Lambdas invoke Digital Ocean APIs for creating a container and talking to the Docker engine, number six, Docker, uh, what else docker just you know docker just creates a container and gives access to the websocket to the front end and front end finally connects to the back end container so in and all like you know eight to ten different technologies happen within a single second maybe in a less than a single second or in a bunch of seconds as you refresh the code and playground and you know just try to practice something and this playground is pretty much shared across all the all the practice exercises as well. So if you resume a typical interactive course, you will see that there are a bunch of practice exercises, right, within your course structure. So if you're taking up an HTML course, you have uh, certain labs, certain things to complete. And these things are actually, you know, these things are actually running on the code dam infrastructure, which is pretty cool. And something, um, at least right now, no other platform is doing. So yeah, that's it. That's how a typical website like CodeDam works. More on more information on architecture and stuff like that will I will share once I'm able to set up some nice setup of recording on that board behind me. So that way, that way we can go into a little, little bit of more architectural details. But I hope this gave some clue to people who were absolutely clueless on how these websites work. This is no rocket science, it's just spinning up some container, some physical host on a cloud provider like DigitalOcean or AWS, and then connecting it to the front end using a very simple UI, which you can see on your screen. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you have some more questions on this, I would love to answer them in the comments below. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you all for watching, and I'm gonna see you in the next one really soon.